Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Nighthawk HVAC. So it's tool time. So we're going to do an unboxing of this uh, Testo 310 Residential Combustion Analyzer Kit. I believe this is the one with uh, the printer. Um, I have to use it today, so um, I'm going to have to do the unboxing in the back of my truck. So anyway, it's in the field unboxing. How do you like that? So anyway, uh, we're going to open it up here and then uh, we'll shoot some footage of it, of the actual, you know, operation and how to use it and all that good stuff on a different, uh, a different clip. So anyway, but this is the unboxing. So this is how it comes. We got a little plastic bag and a little paper cover. So let's go ahead and open her up. And these things, um, I'll put a link to the link on the description below on uh, where you can buy these. But they're right around, I think the printer kit I think is like eight, nine hundred bucks. But I'm lucky, I have an awesome boss and he totally bought this for me, which was very surprising because um, nobody's ever bought me tools before. So, anyway, comes with this nice hard case, just like, a, just like the uh, gauges. All right, so that's that's it right there, that's how it comes. Uh, so, we got our uh, whoops. We got our instruction manual, so we'll be reading that. And then we got uh, this is our um, I think this is our certification thing that says it's you know certified or whatnot. We got our instruction manual for our printer, and then we have uh, this little probably trying to sell us other stuff. I don't know. It's in German. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, but, uh, oh, it's a warranty card, yeah. Alright, so anyway, this is what comes in the kit. We have our, um, our actual combustion analyzer here, and it's got a little plastic cover on it. Seems to be pretty good. Here's the condensate trap. Um, yeah, it's like hard rubber plastic. Feels pretty good. It's heavy. Um, this is this right here. This is the cord to the probe. So here's the probe, and it's got like a little protection thing for the tip of it. So that's how that works. And then here's the little filter thing. And we're we're gonna show you how everything works, uh, but I'm not gonna do that in the back of the truck. So I'll probably crawl in my attic and play with it. So anyway, we have our printer. Ooh, it's tiny. So this is our IR printer. So we can print stuff. Uh, so I'm planning on uh, when I do these combustion analyzing things on these uh, ultra low NOx furnaces, I'm going to print three of these. I'm going to put one in the furnace um, cabinet, one on the bill, and uh, we'll probably keep one on file for our records. Let's see, what's this? This is the USB cable to probably to charge it. Comes with batteries, roll of paper. I'm not sure what this is. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is the um, the charger. It comes with different, you know, different uh, countries to charge. Okay. We got our hoses. Now this is uh, so you can do pressure tests. I think it's a, got a built-in manometer type thing too. Extra filters, and then here's the little cone thing. So yeah, so when you're using the pressure test, you use these plugs uh, to plug it up. And then when you're doing the combustion, you're using this. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I like it. Standard plastic cover, not bad. So we'll go ahead and play with this thing and see how it goes. But uh, that's pretty much what you get out of the box. So today we're going to be setting up a ultra low NOx furnace. This is a Lennox. It's a uh, SL280 um, ultra low NOx furnace. So uh, we're going to be doing a, a combustion analysis and we're going to be adjusting gas pressure and just making sure that uh, we have a proper mixture of air and fuel. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get set up. So uh, here we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our system ready for testing. We're going to do a combustion analysis. We're going to check the, uh, the flue gas and the, the flue gas temperature and pressure. We're going to also do a uh, ambient CO test. And we are also going to um, check the gas pressure. Uh, so what we've done here is we've already drilled our hole. 
after the first 90. Um, we're putting it behind here just so when we seal it up with the high temperature um, silicone, uh, you know, you can't see it. So it's just a, what do you call it, a uh, um, cosmetic thing. So first things first with these Linux, it says here don't adjust it, but uh, according to their training they say go ahead and adjust it if necessary. So we're going to be adjusting it here. Do not do this one, you want to do this one. Um, the test port is back here. I don't know if you can see that. Mm, right there, there it is. And so what we're going to be using is a, uh, a 3 16 Allen wrench. Uh, you could use a service wrench if you could fit it back there, but it doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get that plug out and then uh, we'll move on. All right, so we're going to do our combustion analysis uh, with the Testo 310 combustion analyzer. Uh, so when we first turn it on, we want to go ahead and uh, power it up outside. And it's going to give us a 30 second countdown as it configures. You're going to hear the pump turn on. It's going to display the date, the uh, date, and now there's the countdown. So just like any co um, carbon monoxide detector, it's got to uh, set itself up in fresh air. So the first thing we're going to do on this is we're going to check the gas pressure first. Um, and the reason being is we want to make sure that it's where it needs to be, because all of our other readings will probably be off. Uh, then we'll do our combustion analysis. Uh, we'll do our stack and we'll uh, do our um, ambient CO. So right here it's telling us it's set up for natural gas, which is definitely what we want. So we're gonna hit okay. So now we're set. Now you see here, up here, this is uh, the different modes it has. I don't know if you can see that focus. So yeah, that one's for combustion analy uh, analysis. That one right there is for ambient CO. That's for the stack test, and that's our differential pressure. So the little arrow indicates what mode we have it. So right now it's on CO, so we want to switch it by hitting this button here. And we're switching it to differential pressure. As you can see, it says plug. Now the reason being is this particular um, combustion analyzer, we have to uh, make a little bit of an adjustment. So you see this little thing in the center? That's the particulate filter. We have to take it out and put a plug in there. Uh, that way it can take its proper reading. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, but it's very easy. All you do is you just turn this, pops off. That little orange thing I dropped, that's the plug. You just pop that out and pop that in and you're good to go. Okay, so now we got our plug in. As you can see, it's that little orange thing. And then we take our cap and we just pop that back on there. Like that, and twist. And there you go. So let's go get uh, testing our gas pressure. Okay, so we're at our furnace. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take our hose, which is attached to the gas valve, uh, to the testing port. We're going to slide it over here, and we want to make sure we cover the entire hole. Uh, that way it's not uh, sucking any air in. Now, on the combustion analyzer, it still says plug. We need to zero it out first, so we're going to go ahead and hit start before we turn on the furnace. It's going to give us a little countdown, and now it's at zero. So now we're zeroed out. So now we're going to turn on the furnace. Now we're going to let it run for a good eight minutes because it needs to settle. Um, if we don't do that, our pressures aren't going to be accurate. So we're going to let it run for about eight minutes. And then if we need to make an adjustment, we'll do so. So uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on the furnace and we'll be back in eight minutes. Okay, we're back. So it's been running for about uh, nine minutes. Uh, so we should have everything pretty much uh, settled now. So we got our gas pressure tap right there. And this is where we're at right now. So it's a little high. So we have our instruction manual right here. And basically, it's telling here that on high fire, our CO2 is supposed to be at 6.5 to 7.5. And then our gas pressure for high fire, which it's in high fire right now, it's going to be 3.2, uh, between 3.2 and 3.6 inches of water column. So it's definitely above that. So we're going to go ahead and make an adjustment. So this is our adjustment port right here. Just use a common screwdriver. And uh, clockwise is going to lower it, the pressure. And counterclockwise will increase the pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and lower it. And we want 3.6 maximum. So I'm probably going to shoot for 3.5. 
Now, apparently, if these things are over four and a half inches of water clone, that means it's a defective gas valve and you need to change it at that point. Okay, and it's going to bounce a little bit, so I'm going to leave it right there and let it run for a little bit. And then uh, we'll check it again. Then we'll move on to our combustion test. All right, and then we're pretty much going to let it run for a little bit, let it stabilize a little bit, but it's starting to be within range. Uh, we're also doing a temperature rise test, so our return 75, and we got about 122 on our supply, so it's about 47 degrees. Now this one here, it'll actually tell you what your rise is supposed to be, so we want f uh, for high fire 30 to 60, and for low fire 20 to 50, so we're definitely within range, so it's looking good so far. Uh, once this is kind of settled out, we'll check it. So we're about 3.5. So what we're going to do now is we want to save this information for our printout. So we're going to hit the stop button. And uh, it's going to save it. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, get set up for the combustion uh, analysis. Uh, so here we go. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our combustion an an uh, analyzer or analysis. So there we go. So now it's in that mode. We're going to take our probe here. And we have already installed our cone. So we're going to go ahead and slide it into the cone. So it hits the back and then bring it back a little bit. So it's about in the middle. Get a little tightened so it doesn't go nowhere. And we're going to go ahead and hit the start button. Now our O2 for uh, for this system, we want it to be between 6.5 and 7.5% uh, CO2. Now you can, uh, right now it's showing our, uh, our O2. So we need to change that so we can see it. This is our uh, carbon monoxide reading, mm -hmm. so we got two parts. So we hit the down arrow. That's our efficiency. This is an 80 percenter, so it's an 80.2% efficient. So it's right about where we want it. And this is can't see what that is. I think that's our temperature or that's our ambient temperature. And this is what we want. So this is our oh no no, no I'm sorry that's our excess air. So we're at 76.7. That's what we want CO2. So we want it to be 6.5 and uh, 7.5. So right now we're at 6.28. So it is a little bit low. So one of the things we can do uh, to adjust it is in a situation where we have combustion air vents, we probably want to clean them, get a little more air. Now we're in a garage, so we don't have that option. The garage door is wide open. Uh, so that may be affecting it a little bit. Uh, so we're going to try to adjust our fuel by uh, giving a little bit more gas. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we uh, adjusted our gas pressure. I uh, actually ended up having to turn it up a little bit. Uh, but now we're right at the 6.51% of uh, CO2. So we're going to go ahead and hit the stop button. It's going to save all our information. So now we're going to switch over to our stack test. And this is going to tell us the stack pressure and the stack uh, temperature. So we're going to hit start. It's going to give us a five second countdown. So we have our stack pressure and we have our stack temperature. We're going to give it a minute, let it settle, and then we'll go ahead and hit the stop button and that will record our findings. Okay, so we went ahead and let it settle, so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit stop. And so now that we have all of our info, we're going to move on to the um, to the uh, ambient CO test. So we're going to hit this till we get to the little house with the CO. And what we're going to do we're going to take our probe out and we're going to hold this guy upright like this. We're going to walk around the house while the system's running and we're just going to make sure there's no carbon monoxide in the house. We'll hit start when we're ready to start and we'll hit stop. So let me just show you how it works. So we hit start and it's going to give you a parts per million reading. We're right in front of the furnace and then we would walk around the house and uh, you know get our readings then when we're done we'll hit stop it'll record it and then when we go to print it it'll show up on there so we're gonna go in the house so we can't film in there but uh, we'll be back 
Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is uh, when you hit the start for the carbon monoxide detector or the CO detect, uh, do it outside first just so it can zero out to fresh air, then go inside. Um, once you do that, you know, just kind of walk around, you hold the probe to your chest and just, or you can stick it in the vents. Um, but yeah, we got zero throughout the house, so that's good. So now we got all of our readings on this thing. We want to make a printout. So these have magnets so you can stick it to the stuff. But this is the printer. It's an IR printer, so think of it as like a TV remote. So you're going to go ahead and turn it on. It's got a little green button to tell you if it's on or not. Okay. And you want to put it directly in front of the analyzer. And then all you do now is you just hit the print button. And then it'll start printing. And you basically just keep hitting the print button for as many copies as you want. We're going to attach uh, one copy to the customer's paperwork. We're going to put one, we're going to staple one up to the wall. And we're going to take one for our office so we have it on record. Um, but yeah, it's a good practice to follow. As you can see here, the printout, um, it's just on th regular thermal paper. I think it's done. Let's rip that off and then print another copy. So pretty much this is what it shows. It gives you a little spot where you can put your company info. If you get those little address labels, you can print out all your info and just stick it to it. it shows you the date, the time, all the readings that we took. And then you can write your phone number at the bottom. So that's pretty much how you do it and um, we've been also checking the uh, temperature rise so we're about a 47 degree temperature rise um, it's heating the house pretty good but as you can hear it is a little noisy uh, but it's you can't hear it inside the house thankfully uh, one of the things that we do is we put in the bubble wrap not only does it act as a thermal barrier but it also as a sound damper alrighty so we got our manometer set up so we're checking for total static pressure. Uh, for this unit, it's going to be 0.8. Uh, so we got one right, uh, right here. You want to put it right before the evap coil, right? So, and then you want it pointed. You want to point it down into the airstream. And then when the other one's going to go on the return, which uh, this is sitting on a, a cabinet, so we put it down here in the corner, also pointed straight down. Now this is the field piece uh, SDM5 or SDMN5. Uh, so pretty much it's a dual port manometer. Uh, works great for this. The uh, this one's going to be our supply. This is our return. Now right now I got it on P1, which is our supply. So it's at 0.77, which is ridiculously high. Um, so we switch it over and we're at 0.44 for our return, which is uh, just about right. Uh, so basically it looks like our we have some sizing problems with our supply. So this right here is our total which is 1.18 and it's supposed to be 0.8 total. So we're way high and because that this should be about 0.4 as well so to total about 8. So uh, we have a little bit of resistance going on in that supply somewhere. Um, now the uh, ducts were not done by us. Uh, we just put in the equipment. Uh, I'm going to bring this up to the client. He's actually redoing his ducts himself. So uh, there you go. Warning sign. Um, that's how you set up an ultra low NOx furnace, uh, Lennox uh, SL280. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. And we'll see you on the next one.